Hey everyone, Eran from SternFX here with a new After Effects creative tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how I'm using elements from the Dappled Light toolkit that are available from Artbeats and Artbeats Express. If you'd like to get more details about this collection, you can watch a product demo at the end of this tutorial. Now, this time it's not going to be a step by step lesson, but rather a quick breakdown of four compositions that I've made using clips from Artbeats integrated with some of the dappled light elements. The first one is this meditation scene that starts out very clean and white and then with the help of a few dappled light masks and effect transform itself to more vivid and colorful composition and note how all the elements are integrated very nicely together. The second example is where we are seeing this lady sitting and tapping and it becomes a double exposure shot where we see the leaves on her dress and once again thanks to few effects and masks with some natural clips from this collection. The third example shows a gloomy girl that looks even more sad and more emotional. And if this is not enough, the last example illustrates a teenager that hides under the bridge and suddenly he's near the woods with even more scarier atmosphere. So I've tried to use those clips in order to help to tell the story with even more emphasis on a specific mood. These techniques should be easy to reproduce even if you don't have deep knowledge in After Effects. So let's take a closer look and see how each one of those is made. So I'm going to switch my workspaces from the previewing workspace, which I'm working right now, to the standard one. This, of course, will show us all the layers and I've already opened up this composition. So for what it's worth, this is the original clip without any treatment. And in order to get the perspective of this clip, I've used, of course, the 3D camera tracker. So you can select any clip that has a camera motion to it. So in this case, just right click on it and choose track camera. I've already did it. And if I'm going to select this effect, we can see all those trackers appearing on the shot. The first and most important thing is to actually identify the ground plane. So in this case, if you see a target, which consists of at least three trackers, you can select it, right click on it. And I highly recommend to start up by setting a ground plane and origin. This will reset the coordinates of the scene and it will help you to create a camera. And you can also see that we have a camera over here. This is the synthetic camera that the effect is created. And of course, you can right click on it and create solids or text or null or whatever you need. In this case, I've created two solids, one for the floor, and this is the green one. I'm just going to show it to you. And additional one for the wall. Now, once you have those solids, you can very easily connect layers using the parenting system and they will stick to the same planes. So just so you'll see how this works, I have this hemlock texture over here. If I'm going to double click on it, we can see that this is the texture that I want to use for the floor. Now, in order to make it more integrated into the scene, as you probably saw, we have a mask on it. So if I'm going to double tap on the M letter, and I just want to show it to you, you can see that we have a feathering for the mask and also I've used the negative value for the mask expansion. So we'll have nice soft boundaries. Now, currently it is on top of the model, but we will fix it in a moment. And in order to make it more colorful, I've used the tint effect and I've mapped the white colors to this violet tint. I've also changed the blending mode of this clip to screen. So basically we have this nice blend between those two. Now I've did the same for the other layers. So once we have the wall, I can create the same treatment for the wall. This time I've chosen a different texture. So this is the walnut texture. Once again, everything that you are seeing here is 4K in terms of its resolution. So we can scale them or we can resize them without the worry for any pixelization or degrading in quality. 
And once again, I've applied the same principles. So I've used the tint effect, this time with the cyan color for the white. I set it to the screen blending mode. And of course, I've parented it to the corresponding layer. In this case, layer number six, this is the track of the wall. Now, sometimes you will need to play with the orientation. So you can see that I've modified it just a bit. So it would look more perpendicular to the wall that we have in this room. Now, once we have one wall, of course, we can repeat the same steps for the other wall. So this is what we are seeing over here. But in this case, I'm just using a different texture. So this is the madrone, I guess. This is it. And we have additional light. And this is just behind or supposed to be behind the talent and it will light up using an opacity keyframes. So once again, we have a mask. I've used the same principle with the tint effect. And in this case, if you want to see just the texture, so this is not a moving video, we can turn off the masks. And I'm using this white linen over here. And this is the highlight version of it. So now we have all the elements in place. If you want to bring the girls back, I've created another version of it. So I'm just going to turn off the solo switches and basically turn off the eyeballs for those two solids. And in this case, I've just created a basic, very basic mask just around the talent and played with the mask path, meaning that I've created few keyframes in critical places just so the mask will move according to the movement of the talent. And basically this is it. So now once everything is combined together, we get a sense that the lights or the textures are actually working in concert together, creating this wonderful shot once everything is building up. All right, let's move to the second example. I'm going to double click in order to open it. Once again, this time we are starting with this clip, the sitting and tapping clip, which is actually very interesting. So I wonder what is this girl looking for? Now, I'm assuming that in order to make it more interesting or to hint the viewers that something is happening maybe outside this room, we are going to actually give her these leaves of maple. So the way this was done is by creating two layers. One is the texture of the maple, of course, itself. So this is it. If you just want to see the clip that I've used, here is few seconds let's settle with maybe two or three seconds so this is it just so you'll get a sense how it looks and of course this is using the luma inverted the track mat option over here in the timeline in order to get those leaves into the border or the area of the dress now in order to isolate the dress i'm just going to turn off the effects for this layer and make sure that we can see it i'm using a mask and since this shot is stationary, so nothing is really moving, you don't even have to animate the mask. And in order to isolate the other elements, meaning to separate the dress from the background, I'm using few effects here. So I'm just going to turn them on and show them to you one by one. So we are starting with the color range effect. And just so you'll see the outcome of this, I'm going to turn off the eye for the layer below. So this is what we are getting from the color range. Once again, combined with the mask, I think it will be even more clear to see it without the mask first. And then I can illustrate why we even need this mask. So this is what the color range is getting us. I've basically sampled the color over here and play with the fuzziness. And this is the beginning of a nice matte, but it's not working yet. So in order to create a matte out of it, I'm tinting the whole frame. So this is the tint effect with its default settings. Now there is a levels effect where I'm trying to eliminate all the white colors in the matte. So this is the outcome of the levels effect, makes the picture much more contrast. And now I'm actually going to fill the mask that I have over here. So I'm using the fill effect on the mask in order to just make sure that everything that I'm doing up to this point is just going to work inside the mask that I've created over here. So the option to enable the mask or disable it over here is optional, as you saw. You don't have to use it. We need it for the fill effect in order to make sure that we are filling it.
And just so the borders will be a little bit more softer, I'm using a fast blur with a value of 10 and I'm repeating the edge pixels. And this can create a very nice holdout mat. So once we are taking this mat and we are taking this video, which is basically the damp light, and I'm just going to reset few settings so you can get a sense of how it looks. And of course we are reducing the opacity to 40%. Now we can use the layer above it as a Luma inverted mat in order to show it just in the area of the mask above. And of course you should always check few blending modes. If you don't have the time, just make sure that you are visiting at least three. So multiply should be one of those screen is the other one and the mix between those two, which is overlay. And this is what I've chosen to use in this example. And this is it. Now we are getting some more interesting, almost like a double exposure effect, just in the areas that we want. And it looks very natural and inviting thanks to this maple texture of one of those dappled light elements. Okay, cool. Now let's visit the third example. Here we can see this gloomy girl, and I just want to show you the original first. Now this is not exactly the original, so I want to visit the effect controls, and I'm going to turn off the effect. And this effect is from New Blue Effect, is part of their New Blue Essentials collection, which can help you to fix a lot of problems in post. So in this case, what I'm trying to fix here, and I'm going to zoom in to 200%, is all those skin problems that I'm seeing. So I'm applying this effect, and basically what you need to do is sample one of the colors. So this is what I did over here. And then you should play with the sensitivity and smoothing, a very easy effect. So this is the before and after. And I just wanted to show you this, because if you are already doing some kind of a correction, we might as well fix her face so it will look a little bit more soft or clean. All right, so now that we have this effect out of the way, let's see how those textures were built. We have this composition here, which I'm going to visit in a moment, but for now, I'm just going to show you the effect itself. So this is one of the Elm tree texture. And if you want to see it on its own, I'm just going to right click on it and ask After Effects to reveal the layer source in the project. This way I can go to my previewer and show you how it looks. And by the way, this previewer window, which I'm using is a plugin from MrHorse.tv and it will allow you to play clips in real time inside After Effects. But even without those plugins, you can still work with this collection and create the same stuff. So I'm just showing you how I made it in case you want to know. So we are using this with a basic setting of a soft light blending mode. This is what we are getting. And it looks kind of okay, but I really want to maybe add an extra touch. And in this case, what I'm using here is this composition of this texture. And I already animated the scale of the texture. Remember, those are 4K images. So I want to create some kind of a movement and project it on the wall or the room over here. So this is what I have over here. This is this layer. And in order to make sure that this texture is only going to appear in the background, meaning I don't want to texture her face, I just clean the face with this skin touch up plugin. So in order for the texture to not show inside her face, I'm using the set matte effect and I'm taking the mat from layer number three, which I haven't showed you yet. So let's double click on it in order to show you what I did over here. And this is using the paint option inside After Effects. So I've isolated part of the face, which I want to keep. And I did it by double clicking on the layer and then choosing the brush, which is the paint tool, of course, inside After Effects. And if I'm going to press E in order to show you the effects in the timeline, you can see that I have a couple of brushes, which are basically the same from the beginning until the end. But it is enough in order to create a mat out of it. So just another way to work. And then, of course, we can return to the original comp. And we are using this composition. Actually, we are using the luminance value of this composition in order for the texture to not show up inside her face. So this is without this effect. You can see that it works nicely, but it's quite intense. And this is with the set matte effect. 
So we are isolating the texture only to appear on the background element, which are basically everything except her face and hair. And the combination of a little bit of scaling to this texture combined with this effect is creating this nice movement, although nothing is actually moving inside the scene. So we have the mixture between a live texture and a steel frame, but we are animating it here inside After Effects. And thanks to the set matte effect, we can reach this result. Now, the last example is also the simplest one. So let's just revisit it. And first I want to show you the original clip. So this is our teenager waiting under the bridge. He's kind of depressed. And I think that we want to maybe exaggerate the story. So what I did over here is I've used this maple texture. And just so you'll see it on its own, I'm going to once again, right click on it, ask After Effects to reveal the layer source in the project. Then I'm going to go to the previewer and I want to show it to you in full screen. So let's go to the beginning and I'm also going to press on the tilde key. And I really appreciate the natural feel to it. This is a real shot, a real video. So you can see the grain, which looks great. And also the real camera lens blur. This is not a synthetic effect. And I think it shows once you connect everything together. So to prove my point, let's bring back the composition panel once again. And I'm going to turn on the visibility for this clip. And what I did over here, if I'm going to press U, U in sequence, is mask the clip and then convert it to a 3D layer. And of course, I've played with the transformation. So I've moved it to place and tilt it using the Y and Z rotation. And of course, reduce the opacity. Now, if you are doing so in a right way and then choosing the correct blending mode, in my case, overlay, it already starts to look very impressive. So this is how easy it is to integrate those elements and since they are real, everything is going to match up quite nicely. Now, in order to walk the extra mile and take it even further, I'm using the peer element over here. So once again, just so you'll see it on its own, this is how it looks. Uh, circles almost feels like a bouquet effect. And if we are going to take this element and apply once again the tint effect to it, put it in the screen blending mode and calculate everything together, we can create some kind of a light leaks on top of everything. And once again, I always recommend to reduce the opacity. In this case, it is lowered to 40%. So this is it. A great collection which available to Artbit Express subscribers and can help you to add natural light to your footage in order to tell a better story. And of course, remember that you can also use a part of this collection to add some backgrounds to your moving images to bring more life to your designs. So I hope you find it useful. And until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for OutbeatsExpress.com saying goodbye.